Hey everyone, welcome to the last video for section 9.3. So in this video what we're going to do is go through the general process of how you go about analyzing a nonlinear autonomous system using the sort of linearization locally linear sort of stuff that we went over in the last video, and then put it together and do an example of it for analyzing a system. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So analyzing autonomous nonlinear system. So the process here goes something like this. So when we're always going to assume that our functions are at least two derivatives because then we can just apply this directly. So step one is find critical points. So this is you're looking at say f equals zero and g equals zero. Two is find the Jacobian j and evaluate at each critical point. So if you have three critical points you're going to get three different matrices here for j, one of them at each critical point. And then step three is analyze j at each point using linear system methods to get the type of each critical point. And then four, if you need to, you can sketch or sort of sort of draw out what does it look like. So attempt to sketch if needed. As we'll see, this is pretty difficult. So I'll get a general picture here for the one I'm doing, and then we'll see what Maple says for what it should look like. So let's go ahead and do an example of this. The example we're doing is this one. dx dt is x minus x squared minus xy. dy dt is 3y minus xy minus 2y squared. So step one is look for critical points. Well, to do that, let's write these a little differently. So let's factor out an x from here. So this is x, 1 minus x minus y. And this is y, 3 minus x minus 2y. So for f equals 0, f being the x one, I can have x is 0 or x equals 1 minus y. Because if x is 1 minus y, then that middle term goes to 0. For g to be 0, I can have either y equals 0 or x equals 3 minus 2y. So what are my options here? I have, so critical points, I could have 0, 0, that would do it, because if I hit this one and this one, then both of them are 0. I could get 0 and 3 halves, because that'll hit this one for 0 and this equation for 3 halves. I could have y to be 0 and x to be 1, because that'll hit this first equation and 0, or the intersection of those two. And if you calculate that, the intersection of those is minus 1 and 2. x is minus 1, y is 2, means both those equations. So I have four critical points, so I'm going to have to do this analysis four times to figure out what's going on with this equation. So two, Jacobian. So a trick for doing this, you can just compute the Jacobian right away and then plug it in at all four of the points. So the matrix J is going to be fx, fy, gx, gy, which if we calculate that out, fx is one minus two x minus y, fy is just minus x, gx is just minus y, and gy is 3 minus x minus 4y. All right, so now let's evaluate this guy at each point and look into doing the analysis for what happens here. So at 0, 0, j is what? If I plug in 0 and 0 for x and y, I get 1, 0, 0, 3. And so this should be pretty easy to say this is an unstable node. And the eigenvectors are 1, 0, and 0, 1. This is eigenvalue 1, and this is eigenvalue 3. If you work with the calculation, you'll see that's what you get. If I plug in 0 and 3 halves, my j is negative 1 half, 0, negative 3 halves, negative 3. And if I do the work here, I'll get my eigenvalues are negative one half and negative three, the ones on the diagonal as they should be. And then for one half, I get an eigenvector of five minus three. And for minus three, I get an eigenvector of zero, one. Let's keep going. If I plug in one, zero, then J is negative one, negative one, zero, two, which has eigenvectors, eigenvalues, of minus 1 and 2, and corresponding eigenvectors for minus 1 I get 1, 0, and for 2 I get 1, 3. 
this is all work we've done in the last couple sections, so you can work that out on your own to figure out what those are. And then if I plug in the interesting one is if I plug in, so this is a saddle, and then if I plug in negative 1, 2, my matrix becomes 1, 1, minus 2, minus 4, which is now not obvious, so let's look for the eigenvalues here. So determinant of 1 minus r, 1 minus 2 minus 4 minus r is 1 minus r minus 4 minus r plus 2. This is r squared plus 3r minus 4 plus 2, which is r squared plus 3r minus 2, which does not factor. So we have to use a quadratic formula on that. So r is going to equal negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 8 over 2. So negative 3 plus or minus root 17 over 2, which is awful. But what we realize is this is going to be a saddle point. Because root 17 is bigger than 3. So if when I add do minus 3 plus root 17, I'm going to get a positive number, and the negative is going to be a negative number. So I'll get a saddle point there as well. And if you solve for the eigenvectors, you get something that looks kind of nasty, but your eigenvectors look like this. These guys. So for those eigenvalues, you get those eigenvectors, and it's going to be a saddle point with those guys, where this is going to be the, this is going to come in, and this is going to go out in terms of the direction of the saddle point. So now let's attempt to draw what all this looks like and see what happens. So what we saw that we had, we had critical points at 0, 0, at 0, 3 halves, at 1, 0, and at negative 1, 2. This guy here was an unstable node with the things being in the coordinate directions. This here was a saddle point with the, the guys on the axis coming in and the guys up at the angles here going out. This guy here was a sink with everything coming in, but we had the eigenvectors being as 0, 1, so directly in from the axis, and then off in this direction as well. And this guy up here was our saddle point, which is our nasty eigenvector one. So something like this, where you've got this one's out and this one's in. So from this, you can sort of guess what your direction is going to look like. So this is, this is all a pretty nasty looking sketch here, and that's what you're going to get out of these systems. But you can sort of guess what your direction is going to look like from here. Right? So if I start here, I'm going to come away from here and then end up inside this sink. And same thing here, I'm going to come and I'm going to end up inside this sink. If I start here, I'm going to come straight across. But some of these curves are going to go and go off and follow the saddle point and then may loop around. We'll see what happens. That depends on the actual nonlinear system. So once you start getting away from the actual critical points, it depends a lot on the nonlinear system, not just the linear system you have. And you're going to get some directions that come out of the saddle point and go into this one. And things that go down are just going to go down because there's, no, there's nothing else down here for them to interact with. They're just going to take off and go down that way. So that looks pretty awful. And that's what you're going to get out of these pictures. These drawings are not going to be great. So generally, you will not have to draw stuff. But let's see what Maple says about this and see what it gives me for this picture. So here's the whole picture as drawn by Maple. So as you can see, we didn't do, you know, too bad. It's not great because of what our setup is, but, you know, because drawing things by hand is not great, but we didn't do it. We didn't do too bad. There is a node at zero. That looks about right. There is going to be a sink at three halves. Everything looks like it's sort of coming into here around three halves. There's going to be a saddle point at one. You can see some stuff going up, some stuff going down around one here. And there's going to be another saddle point up at my at 1 minus 2, somewhere in this range here. So let's see what we get. Let's go zoom in more on each of these points and see what we get. So if we zoom in towards the origin, towards 0, 0, we definitely see our node structure coming in. That It looks very much like a unstable node near the origin. If we go to our other point out at um, 1, 0, there's our saddle point. Right at 1, 0, so you've got curves going up, going down. There's sort of our saddle point vector field we expect to see right there. If we go to the one at 3 halves and 0, we see our sink. All the arrows sort of funneling in towards 1 and a half here on this line. And then if we jump out to our other one at minus 1 and 2, we see another saddle point looking field there. So if we zoom in each of the critical points that we saw, we get the right idea. We see that we get the right structure that we expected to see based on our linear analysis, even though this is solving the full nonlinear system here. 
Drawing can be annoying, but overall the picture gets you an idea of what's going on with your system, and you can sort of use that to figure out how your system behaves. All right, so there's the main example for this stuff. Um, uh, those calculations did look kind of bad. They were kind of a lot of stuff to do there, which is why it'll be we'll be careful to make sure that when problems you get problems assigned, that they're not too too complicated because there is a lot to do for each of these problems. All right, that's the main example for this one. Um, hopefully that made sense, but you can have to talk about it tomorrow in class if you want to. Um, so thanks for watching, and next one we'll go into more examples of different systems that use these sorts of properties. So I will see you then.